Church of Apostolicity, the Apostolic Doctrine, COA Network. Our Wednesday Bible class, let's have a word of prayer, and we can get started. Father God, in the precious, wonderful name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord, because you're so good, so good, so good. Your mercy endureth forever. We thank you, Lord God, for your voice, your word, your guidance, your help, your strength. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord, because you are God. And beside you, there is no other. We thank you for this Bible class and the teaching that you're about to bestow upon us this evening. We give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 42. Matthew chapter 5, verse 42. We're still talking about God, God's credit system. God's credit system. Amen. God's credit system. Verse 42 says, Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Again, give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1. Give to him that asketh, and don't, don't, don't say no. Remember, we're talking about God's credit system. We, we talked about it a lot last week. Uh, I have my notes here in case I want to, ain't nothing but scripture, so I don't have no words to go back and pick up. But um, I'm sure if I need to pull up something, I, it'll come to my mind. Uh, but God's credit system. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 23. We're going to read one verse. This is just a... We, we know the world is in a mess. This is just to remind us how it got there and why it stays there. Verse 23 said, The princes are rebellious, the companions of thieves, and companions of thieves, everyone loving gifts, follow after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither does they cause the widow and come unto them. In other words, God is saying nobody is treating anybody right. Everybody doing what they want to do. Everybody doing what's right in their own eyes. Amen. He said the princes are rebellious. That means everybody that's in rule, politicians, CEOs, CFOs, managers, supervisors, everybody is just doing wrong. And everybody love, everybody take bribes. Everybody is being uh, 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 bought off, as you would say. Everybody, hey, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. Amen. We hear it all the time in politics where somebody threatened to tell and another person said, you tell on me, I'm going to tell on you. In other words, everybody is in a crooked bed together. In other words, God say, we don't have honest rulers anymore. We don't. We, we don't have honest rulers. Go to chapter 5 of Isaiah. We do not have honest rulers. Why? Because everybody loves money. Everybody want money. Everybody love money. Everybody willing to break the law. Well, they broke it. Why can't I break it? They doing it. Why can't I do it? Everybody doing something wrong, but everybody's pointing at everybody else. And God is saying, y'all stop pointing fingers and look at yourself. He said, y'all don't do it the way I tell you. He said, I have a credit system that worked better than all of y'all. You don't have to be bought off. You don't have to take bribes. You don't have to be tricked. Uh, financially to get what you want. You don't have to do that. God said, y'all stop taking these bribes. Y'all stop taking these payoffs. Y'all stop taking these under, under the table deals to make things work for you. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 5, verse 22. God's credit system. Uh, um, in to, tonight, talking about God's credit system, we're going to uh, mix in uh, uh, being with Jesus, talk about security. Security of the Lord, security from the Lord, security in Jesus Christ. We are secure. And, 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 and I guess I'm, in the, I'm, I'm talking in the financial side of it, but yes, the spiritual side of it. But I need to use the financial side to show you all the spiritual side because it, it comes back to my mind what my pastor said. We're, we're working to lead a bunch of carnal people down a spiritual pathway. And because you don't lock the spiritual pathway, I have to use carnal examples and circumstances to get you on the spiritual pathway. Amen. So uh, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 22, it reads, Woe unto them. Now 25, yeah, chapter 5, verse 22. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine 
and men of strength to mingle strong drink. People get high. Let's <laughs> sum it up. People are getting high to do, to accomplish their goals because you're getting high. We got to stop getting high. Verse 23, <coughs> excuse me, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous for him. In other words, you're being bought off and you're being bought off because you're intoxicated. And when you're intoxicated, you make deals with the devil to get something you want because you are not straight in your mind. What am I saying? People are not straight in their mind today. You know, marijuana is legal. All alcohol is legal. Uh, uh, all kinds of drugs are legal. You know, we want to say you can't take co uh, cocaine, but you can go to the doctor and get some codeine. You know, you can get some all of these drugs over the counter with a prescription per se, and you can take them. In other words, the world is high. And because the world is high, they want to stay high. So they make deals. And God is saying, Y'all are justifying the wicked for reward because you're intoxicated. And we know if you really look at the world, I know the young generation maybe can't attest to it, but all of us in a certain age group, we know what the problem is. Verse 24, he says what? Therefore, therefore, uh, therefore I don't want to read that verse. Let's go to Psalm 37. He says, so it's time for us to sober up. Time for us to sober up. Uh, Psalm 37. Again, God's credit system. We're talking about giving. You may be struggling saying, well, Pastor, what that got to do with giving? Well, remember I talked about, and I told you I'm an expository preacher, so you have to keep up with me. So I'm picking up tonight like I'm still preaching last week. So if you can't remember what I preached last week, you're going to be in the dark to some degree. Uh, we can't go around borrowing money and not paying it back. We have to loan to people that ask. We have to give to pe people that ask. And we were talking about lending when we ended last week, and I was talking about being a slave. You, when you borrow, you are a slave to the lender because you are the one that's struggling, dodging the individual because you know you have to pay them back or feel in some sort of way when you see them because you know you haven't paid them back when you know you could have paid them back. Uh, Psalm 37, let's go to verse 25. 37, 25. He said, now this is a scripture a lot of people quote, I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Read that again. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. What are you saying? If we stick with God's credit system, we always have security. We are secure. We are protected. God will take care of you. And you remember I told you last week the credit system start with tithes and offering and giving to other people. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. If you pay your tithe, I won't let the devil take nothing from you, and I won't let him give you more than you need to have. But the only way you're going to get something, give, and it shall be given unto you. Talking about a credit system. If you want God to bless you, you got to follow the simple rules. So now, look at what the man is saying in verse 25. He said, I've been young. He said, now I done got old. He said, but I've never come up short. The righteous, the righteous have not been forsaken. And his seed, David said, my children are not begging because I follow God's credit system. I did what God told me to do. Amen. Verse 26, he said what? He is ever merciful and lended and his seed is blessed. Saints, saints. Now, I think I talked the last week a little bit about the borrower. Now, let's talk about the lender. He said now, or the giver, the lender. He said, when y'all give, don't worry about getting it back. See, a lot of y'all give somebody something and you be just waiting for them to, to replenish or give back what you, stop it. Whatever you give them, don't worry about it. Let them keep it. When they get it, they'll give it back. And if they don't give it back, they have to deal with God. Look at what the man says here. He is ever, ever, this is the righteous now. We are ever merciful. In other words, we'll give every time somebody asks, we got it in our pocket, we'll pull it out because we're merciful. We understand 
Listen, when you've gone through tough times and you see somebody else going, we know what it's like. But the problem is we got too many people that don't allow themselves to go through test and trial that God have orchestrated for your life. If God set it up for you to go through it, you're going to go through it. Now, you might as well go through it with God holding your hand instead of him pushing you. Just go through it. Grab the hand. Hallelujah. Grab the hand of Jesus Christ and walk with him. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Lendeth, E-T-H. Uh, uh, e, y'all know E-T-H means he never stopped lending. A lot of y'all, I ain't, I ain't giving nobody else no money. Every time I give them, they don't, so-and-so owe me, they paid me back. Listen, that's why you keep coming up short. If you are righteous, listen to the scripture. Look at God's credit system. He said, if you are righteous, you are ever merciful. And your seed, your seed. When I die, who's responsible for my seed? Jesus Christ. He said, John, how you live is going to determine how I treat them. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Let's go to Psalm 112. How you live has a lot to do with how I treat your kids, John. If you live right, I got to protect your seed. If you do what I tell you to do, I have to look out for your seed. Psalm 112. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 112. Now, this is a, 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 a psalm that's telling or, or telling us what, how, how a man live when he's quick to give. Lending. Remember, I said we're dealing with lending or giving. Uh, a man that's, that's not uh, 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 stingy. Thank you, Lord. That's the best way to put it. Talking about a person that's not stingy. Look at what he say with a person that's not stingy. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. Do you delight greatly in God's commandment? Do you really love all of his instruction? Ooh, glory, hallelujah. Do you really love all of God's Jesus instructions? Read, he said, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, brothers and sisters. If you want your family, you know, uh, uh, to be mighty upon this earth, you have to really depend upon God's commandments. We can't trust in anything else. Read, wealth, watch this, wealth and riches shall be in his house. Now, y'all say millions. Got nothing to do with a value, is the, the value of a dollar as we see it is that because wealth sometimes has nothing to do with money. Riches have nothing to do with money. Listen, to be powerful doesn't mean you have a lot of money. To be powerful meaning Jesus is behind you. Jesus is in front of you. Jesus is beside you. Jesus is over you. Jesus is under you. In other words, you have put all of your faith and trust in Jesus. So no matter what the weather is like, hallelujah, riches, look at it, wealth and riches, shall be in his house and his righteousness endured forever. When you do right by God, everything going to work out to your benefit. Hallelujah. See, and that brings back some of those, oh, those New Testament scriptures that we've read when he said he's whipped you in test and trial. All things work together for your good. You, listen, you all, y'all got to believe that. If you love Jesus, if you love God, all things are for your good if you felt or feel that you are following the word of God. Come on, verse 4, he, hallelujah. Verse 4 says, unto the upright, unto the upright, there arises light in darkness. Light in darkness. That means that no matter how bad the situation is, we don't even see it. Don't care how bleak the situation appear to be, we don't see that. Because there's light in darkness. Why? Because I know that Jesus said no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I know that all things work together for my good. I know that God said he'll never leave me, forsake me. I know that the righteous will never be forsaken, nor my seed begging bread. I know that. So no, no matter how difficult things may appear to be, I know it's okay. Why? Because I am walking with Jesus. I am following God's credit system. I can loan people money and miss my own bills, but guess what? I'm following God's credit system. It's going to be okay. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 4 again. Unto the upright there arises light and darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. Listen, what the psalmist is saying, what God wants us to get tonight, you all, he said, no matter how bad it gets, when you live right, you're still going to do right. No matter how bad your situation gets, you're still going to help somebody else. Don't care how low your money gets, you're still going to help somebody else. Don't care how low your refrigerator is on food, you're still going to help somebody else. Why? Because you don't know how to do nothing else. Why? Because Jesus done trained us, hallelujah, to show mercy. Again, God's credit system. The more I give to Jesus, the more he going to give to me. The more I give to him that asketh, the more men are going to give to me. Give to him that's asking. Don't turn them away. Hallelujah. Men shall give in your bosom. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Ooh, that ooh, glory. So no matter what I do, when something comes to me, it's good measure. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I got to read that one one more time. Unto the upright, there arises light in darkness. He is gracious and full, full of compassion. Hallelujah. And righteous, even in the midst of darkness. Listen, don't care how bad it gets. Let me tell you, let me tell you, saints. If you feel, let me revise it. If you have the Holy Ghost, if you've been baptized in Jesus' name, and you feel situation right now is bad. Let me tell you, it's not bad. It's equal to what you are capable of handling or dealing with or sustaining. Otherwise, God is a bald-faced liar because he said, I won't put more on you than you can bear. And when you go to saying you can't bear it, you're calling him a liar. Now, I'm God is not a liar. There have been times, and I've told y'all that was hard, but here I stand today. Hallelujah. Ha righteous never been forsaken, and I have never begged for bread. I have never begged for anybody to give me anything. And there's been times when we didn't have no bread. Oh, hallelujah. Let me, come on, let's keep reading. A good man, a good man, a good man showeth favor and lendeth. A good man showeth favor and lend it. A good man will give somebody their last twenty dollars and give it, and, and the person that's getting it don't even know that was my last twenty dollars. Cause I'm a good man. Listen, don't you want to be a good man? Don't you want to be a good woman? Don't you want to be a good child? Don't you want to be a good teenager? Don't worry about if somebody you know you got twenty dollars. That's all you got, but you know it ain't a big deal if you lost it or if somebody said, man, you know, I need to get my medicine. Or I need to get my nails done. I need to, and you feel compassion for them. Give them the twenty dollars. Cause look what he said: a good man showeth favor. Ooh, glory, hallelujah! Talking about God's credit system. Listen, who gave you that twenty dollars, Jesus? Don't you know if you really need it, He gonna put it back in your pocket? You give twenty, somebody give you fifty. Hallelujah! Read it. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. Keep on lending. Keep on lending. Y'all want to say, well, if, I, if they still owe me $20 and want more, 20, give them another 20 Lend this. You don't stop lending. Oh, my Lord. Hallelujah. Watch this. He will guide his affairs with distraction. Distraction. What, if, what am I saying? You know that my distraction is Jesus got me. Y'all think discretion is, well, you know, I ain't got but $20 and I got to feed my family. Uh -uh. Look at the lady that fed the prophet. She was going to use discretion in the man of God said, you feed me, you'll never be hungry. You feed me, you have food. She looking like, yeah, right. All I got is a half a cup of flour and a little oil. And you telling me if I bake you a cake that me and my boy going to eat later? Yep. That's discretion. So what are you going to do? You got God saying, give up your last and I'll fill the pot. And you said, well, I can't see that happening. So what's your discretion? You think you can fill the pot? Because you done made it. You done already vowed we're going to eat and die. The man of God said, well, since you're going to eat and die, let me give you another option. Hallelujah. Why don't you feed me and you live? Oh, glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. That give me cold chill. I'm going to die anyway. What the heck? What I got to lose? So I might as well feed you and see. Wait a minute. Let me do this God's way and see how my credit situation work out. Because it's bad. 
I can't pay the car note, but I can pay my tie. And you telling me if I paid my tie, you would take care of the car note. Well, I can't pay it next month. No way. So you might well take this month. Two months won't be no worse than one month. And you find out God paid the car off for you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. What are we talking about? God's credit system. Oh, glory. Discretion. You know, one of the things that we fail to realize, you all, when it's serving God, we tend to use our mentality to say that's the way God think. That's not the way it works. We need to have the mind of Christ, not Christ have the mind of us. See, and we too busy trying to get Christ, give our, we too busy trying to give our mind to Jesus instead of take Jesus' mind and, oh, glory, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. A good man, and he handled his affairs with discretion. Hallelujah. In other words, another way you can look at it, I'm going to take care of you, and I'm going to eat less. I'm going to, listen, I was going to go and buy me a nice big salad, a salmon salad, and get me a Coca-Cola and get me a honey bun. But since you can't eat, I tell you what, we're going to go and we're going to share this $10 and we're going to go get us something and we're going to share. We're going to go buy four or five tacos. You get two, I get two. Amen. We're going to go buy a supersized fry. We're going we gonna to share this money. We're going to, listen, hallelujah, because we both got to eat. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to not feed you. I'm going to feed us. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Come on, read. Uh, uh, verse 6, he said what? Surely he shall not be moved forever. When you do it God's way, when you follow God's credit system, you can't be, man, you can't be moved forever. Read. What else he said? The righteous shall be in everlasting numbers. Listen, the, listen folks ain't going to forget you when you do right. Something is going to always stand about you being some. Listen, David got some. Hallelujah. Something going to always be about you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Watch. Now, this is the verse I love the most. He said what? He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Read that again. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. And I was thinking about me. I started a church from nothing. Now, I've been broke. I've been broken than a joke. I've been broken than broke, if, you, if there is such a thing. Amen. My wife done watched us be broke, keeping the church going. Evil tidings, meaning we are not afraid of putting money, moving things around, knowing that we, we may not have money to do nothing tomorrow. In other words, we are not afraid of losing money. I, I, I was thinking today about business. When, when, when you get into business, you got to put money. That's why I tell people I'm an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur meaning I'm willing to take risks. If you're not willing to take risks over here with Jesus Christ, you're not going to make it. Because every time things don't go your way, you're going to say it's evil and you're going to flop out. They say you're going to go belly up. Belly up means you're going to fall out on your back and can't get up. You ever seen a roach or a bug get on their back and they can't get up? That, you don't went belly up because you, you done lost some money or things didn't go your way. What are you going to do about it? Listen, that was yesterday I lost. That today is day. I can't get that back. That's gone. I got to deal with what I got today and make it. Listen, listen, listen. Money can't, listen, if you're going to serve Jesus, money can't make you. You make money. I say that again. Money don't make me. I make money. Hallelujah. I make money. Money don't make me because money is gone. It blows away. It floats. Folks still, you, you make bad investments and it's gone. You can't sweat the dumb stuff. Oh, glory, hallelujah. If you're going to serve Jesus Christ, you can't be afraid of evil tidings. You can't be afraid to do things. You can't be afraid to venture out. Uh, 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 me and Tommy were talking about something, and we, we, we got in a business deal together. Tommy said, I'm going out swinging. I said, I like that. Going. In other words, you may knock me down, but I'm going to get up. I may fall swinging like this. But guess what? I'm going out swinging. I'm not going to just, listen, you ain't going to knock me down and I'm going to stay. I'm going to get up. Amen. If I get up with a busted eye, I'm getting up. If I get up and can only swing one arm, I'm getting up. Oh, hallelujah. What am I saying? A, 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 a man that know how to take care of his affairs don't get in because a hard time show up. Y'all done seen people give up. They kill their family. Because a hard time. Because they ain't got no money. Because they can't live on the hill. Well, I ain't never lived up there. Right. You know, so come on down here, brother. Let me show you how good it is down here. Come on, let me show you what it's like. 
to be able to sit on your front porch and, and, and wave at your neighbors and, and, and walk down your street, you know, and, and, and let, let me show you what it's like driving a truck holly, instead of a, a, a Rose or a Mercedes. It's a lot of fun. Hallelujah. But see, when you, when you fall out because things don't go your way, that means that, that stuff controls you. Listen, nothing controls me but Jesus. Now, watch the latter part of this verse, verse 7. He said what? He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. Oh, my Lord. When your heart is fixed on trusting in God, all things work together for your good. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Count it all joy when I fall into dive of temptation. In the midst of, with the temptation, he get me out of the trouble. Why? Because my heart is fixed. I'm not afraid of tests. I'm not afraid of trial. I'm not afraid of being broke. I'm not afraid of losing money. I'm not afraid of no family member dying. I'm not afraid of losing my car. I'm not afraid of breaking my leg. I'm not afraid of getting sick I'm not afraid I'm not afraid I'm not afraid because my heart is fixed why because I use God's credit system I do it the way God tell me to do it I'm gonna always prosper hallelujah I invest my heart and soul and spirit in Christ I'm gonna get rich I'm always gonna get a payoff and a payback I'm always gonna get a kickback and listen and I didn't sell out to the devil I didn't sell out with a bribe. I didn't sell out to be evil. I didn't sell out to nobody but Jesus. What are we talking about? God's credit system. Don't let the trials that you go through interfere. Get it in your head. That's why I say I use money. Money don't make me. I make money. Oh, hallelujah. Money don't make me. I make money. Some of y'all out there, money make y'all. That's why y'all can't deal with, oh, hallelujah. Y'all don't trust in the right. That's a scripture. See, this is what Paul probably got his from. He said men put their faith and trust in money and it kills them. It's an it's a evil thing that pulls them away. He called it a perdition. In other words, you keep trying to make money and you find yourself leaving Jesus Christ. But if I keep reaching for Jesus, the money get left. But it's amazing. Somehow I left the money, but it's still right in my pocket. I left the money, but when I reached back there, and I thought, wait a minute, I thought I left you back there, and I reached in this pocket. What the lady say? How come I made you a cake and some oil? I know I turned all of that oil up. I know when I got through dipping that flour, that flour bottle, bottle or box was empty. And every time I look in there, there's some more flour. Oh, hallelujah. What am I saying? She was working on God's credit system. God say, feed that man that I sent to you first, and I'll make sure you never hunger. I got you covered. Listen, pay your tithe. Give your offering. Give to him that's asking, and I guarantee you, you will never go without. You may not get to eat a steak every time you want to anymore, but listen, you can still eat good. What's wrong with eating vegetables? I ain't nothing like some good vegetable soup. But you won't know what it tastes like until you can't afford meat. So God is teaching you how to eat better, and you worrying about what you don't have. What am I saying? But watch this. So you mad because you can't eat a steak and God teach you how to eat vegetable. So with the temptation, he had got you out of it. Because now when you can buy a steak, you want vegetable soup. No, no, no. I don't, want, I don't, I don't need no meat. Man, baby, make some vegetable soup. You remember that? That's soup. Listen, all of us that have gone through a tough time, I mean, tough. And I ain't talking about no moment when you was out of a job 20 days. I'm talking about where you was out of a job with no money. And then when you got on your feet, I, I, I wish I could, I, I wish it was fair of me to tell y'all how blessed I am with stuff. And it, I don't even know I got it. I don't even know I got it. I don't even know I got it until somebody tell me, I'm going, huh? I, you know, you're right. I ain't thought about that. You know why? Because I'm working off God's credit system. God's credit system. Listen. God will bless you. God will bless you. Listen, that's why you get a lot of preachers that took over somebody else's ministry and they don't know how to give and give and give. They want to hold, because when they walked in, it was $125,000 in the checking account and they want to keep it there. 
Well, when I started mine, hallelujah, I don't know if I had a dollar and 25 cents in the checking account. Hallelujah. Listen, what am I saying? God's credit system. God's credit system. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Read that again. He, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. This is a man that know how to treat right, treat people right based on the word of God. And guess what? His heart is fixed. 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 What is it fixed on? Trusting in the Lord. You can't do anything to get him to stop trusting in God. That's why I tell people, they can say whatever they want. You can't tell me what God can't do. I have come too far in 32 years, almost 30. You can't tell me what Jesus can't do. Why would any idiot try to tell me that Jesus ain't real? Why would any idiot come along and tell me that you ain't got to be baptized in Jesus' name? Why would any idiot come along and tell me that you don't have to speak in tongues. Do y'all know who I am and where I came from? You don't know. Why would somebody tell me you don't know what it's like to be broke? You, you don't know what it's like to be broke. <laughs> you don't know what it's like to lose money. I done lost thousands of dollars on two houses just to keep the church going. Do you know who I am? God have brought me through. My heart is fixed. Me and my wife have shopped at thrift stores. And we both, I know that she don't even get rid of a lot of the clothes from the thrift store, but she'll get rid of them clothes she done bought in the up the, 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 the maces and all of that. And I know she probably holding on to them like I do. Because I, that, that, listen, that's a memory with that, that, that pair of pants there. That was when I was broke and I had to go in the thrift store and, and flip through clothes and put them in the cleaners. Listen. Oh, my Lord, How, don't tell me I don't know what it's like. I done told y'all me looking for money in a car seat. <laughs> a car seat. When I know I done took all the money out the car seat, and I'm still out there. Well, maybe I left a quarter. What's a quarter going to do with a man with wife and two children in a house no car no. So don't tell me I don't know. So when I come to you all and tell you, don't think I don't know what it's, what it's like. Listen, don't tell me I don't know what it's like to own a business. What you think I got here? COA Network, that's a business. Brother James came to me since we started the outreach. And he said, Pastor, you know, we, he said, me and Tommy, we're going to buy some more tripod because we tired of transferring tripod. I said, no, y'all ain't buying it. Here's the credit card. Pastor's going to be $200. I don't care. That was a time he said $200. I said, well, we got to wait for two weeks. <laughs> I can't give him one in two weeks. I can get one two weeks. Listen. I can give him a credit card, buy both of them. And something else he bought was 200 He said, well, Pastor, you know that's over $500. Buy it. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Y'all don't know. What am I saying? God's credit system. God's credit system. I don't normally preach about money, but apparently God wants me to talk about this. Somebody must be struggling. Listen, God's credit system. I done been there. I mean, I done, I done been there. I've been there. <laughs> but just, just keep on giving your time. Keep on giving your offer. If somebody asks, you ain't got for $5. I got that. If somebody come along and say, man, can I borrow $5? You give it to them with joy. I say, yeah, man, here, here you go. Don't, don't worry about, well, that's all you got? Man, don't worry about what I got. Do you need the $5? Because I don't need it. Guess what? Because I got Jesus, hallelujah. My heart is fixed. I'm fixed. And you can't change me. Jesus done brought me too far. Listen, listen, COA. Y'all got a pastor that's not a novice. Don't think I'm a novice. Just because I didn't show you how broke I was when you saw me doesn't mean I wasn't broke. Listen, because my heart is fixed, hallelujah. Because my heart is fixed, money don't make me. I make money. Hope y'all get what I'm saying with that. Listen, yes, I was broke, but you didn't know it, did you? Yes, I came to church many times with no money in my pocket, but y'all didn't know it. Some of y'all, I mean, most of y'all been around since I had a few dollars. But I'm talking about them that been around when I was broke. Y'all didn't know I was broke. Didn't even act like I was broke. 
Oh, hallelujah. There's time I went out and fed people. They didn't know I was spending my last $50 for them to eat. Oh, I don't need that. Oh, pastor, you ain't hungry? No, I'm fine. I wasn't hungry, so I wasn't lying, but you hungry. Oh, hallelujah. Don't tell me about God's credit system. Listen, and I'm not boasting about money. I'm boasting about security. God have always taken care of me. The righteous, the, I've been young. Now I'm old, but God have never left me without. Got put out of a house, get put out the house tomorrow, and God wait till the day before to tell me where I'm moving. Don't tell me what God can't do. Don't tell me what he can't do. Don't tell me what he can't do. But you got to do it God's way. If you want security, hallelujah, you got to use God's credit system. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. His, watch this, verse 8. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemy. Wait a minute. Wait, whoa, whoa. Freeze. What did you just say? His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. In other words, he see his enemies mistreated and that bother him. He's afraid like, man, Lord, why are you doing that to him? Listen, oh, my Lord, you get so wrapped up in the Jesus, you can't stand no harm to an enemy. You can't even stand to see your enemy, even though you wanted to do something, but you didn't do it. And then when God does it, it breaks your heart. How many times, how many times, maybe y'all haven't felt, when I've seen somebody die, and I know they mean it low down, but like, man, Lord, and they didn't get saved. In other words, we watch unsaved people die. If we really live right, that should affect you. You should not be feeling happy because an evil person died. Why? Because I'm going to show you something about that in a second. Because what's wrong with you? That person died and went to hell and you think it's funny? You glad? Do you know what hell is like? No, you don't. I know you don't. He has dispersed. He has given to the poor. His righteousness need ever, his righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away the desire of the wicked. Shall, in other words, people get mad because they see you prospering. And you they, what did he do? I ain't done nothing but serve Jesus. That's all I've done. Listen, y'all stop being afraid because hard times. Listen, let's, let, let's understand something. First of all, if you say there is no such thing as hard times, let's clear that up in your head. He said that if you're righteous, you can see light in darkness. So when is there a hard time? If you can see light when it's dark, in other words, when you ain't got no money, you still happy. Listen, if money, if lack of money make you sad, that means money make you and you don't make money. If you make money, you can get as much as you want. How much you want? I make money. <laughs> Sometimes some of the stuff God put in my head to say, I just had, look, I got, hey, I got my own printing press. I can print some dollars whenever I want them. All I got to do is say, Lord, how we going to fix this? Look in my pocket there the money is. You ever went to your bank and you know what no money in that bank and you went like where that come from and you look and you couldn't find you couldn't even find your misaddition because there wasn't any God put that money there and then when it happened two or three times you don't try to figure out you just say thank you Jesus hallelujah what am I saying I make money I print my own greenbacks oh hallelujah how do you do that live right God make folks give you money didn't he say give I had a hat. Go get me one of them offering plates. Come on, move. Hurry. I, I got to do this quick. Listen. Listen. Hallelujah. Uh, let me, God said, give. 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 Listen. It ain't just money. Give love. Love come back. Give patience. Patience come back. Give understanding comes back. Give knowledge, it comes back. Give education, it comes back. Give, give all of these different things. God said, give. Give, give, and it shall be given a good measure. Press down. down. Shaken. That means you can get some more in there. Shall men give unto you? So, wait a minute. That's how I printed my greenbacks. Because I gave. 
because I keep giving. I keep giving. And it just keeps coming back. And then it comes back so fast, you, you, ain't, you don't even know what to do with it. Listen, listen, listen. God has blessed me so I barely walk around with money in my pocket. You know why? I don't need it. I don't need it. I can't for the life of me go with nobody and try to pay for my own stuff. And I done learned. I'm fighting, John. They want to pay. Let them pay. And listen, listen, because I can pay it. But it's like, what I need money for? What do I need money for? To get some gas? I done had people see me, oh, 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 Pastor Porter, let me pay for your gas. I be wanting to say, no. The Holy Ghost said, let them pay for your gas, John. Listen, y'all don't know what God can do for you until you use his credit system. How do you, how do you, how do you respond when all out the blue, and this is true testimony, how do you respond? You know all you got is $50. Your tank is on E. You go to the gas station. You're going to put 20, 25 in there, and somebody that you know show up and fill your tank up. How do you, please explain that to me, where you know they ain't supposed to be where you are. But God, that's God's credit system. How is it, how many times have you been down and, and I'm going to just say me, and I call you. And your heart just go, oh, thank you, Lord, you called me. And you're like, oh, Pastor, I was thinking about you, and I'm glad. I said, well, God must have told you to call me. Yes, God told me to call you because I wouldn't have called you because I ain't thinking about you. But I ain't going to say that. You know? But I'm just saying, God put you on my heart. Listen, that's Jesus talking about God's credit system. Come on, let's go there. Let, let me get off that right now, that verse. I love that verse, though. Let's go to, um, where is it, Lord? Deuteronomy somewhere. Chapter 15. Deuteronomy chapter 15. What my time? Oh, we're doing good. I got a good 30 minutes for this one. Praise the Lord. That's good. Y'all stop being afraid. You got Jesus. You ain't got nothing to be afraid about. We're talking about God's credit system. We're talking about God's credit system. We're talking about God's credit system. Thank you, Jesus. Um, you children, y'all better stop playing on Zoom, making everybody else laugh. Pay attention. <laughs> Just like, you know you're in church, don't you? I can see you. Rayleigh. I see you. Who else I saw acting a fool? Aiden. Them Beverly kids. Because <laughs> you ain't home. With Nina, get them in line. So Pastor called it our name out over the world wide web. I've been doing that every time y'all come to church. Y'all know that? It's all on, it's all on YouTube. Hallelujah. Come on, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15. God's credit system. God's credit system. Listen, God will look out for you, man. That's all I can tell you. And I'm, listen. Like I say, it ain't the money. I'm using that to make you try to understand where I'm coming from. God look out for you, but you got to do what he tells you to do. I told you last week, pay your tithe, give your offering, and give to him that's asking, and watch it. Your bowl will never get empty. Never. It'll get low, but it won't get empty. Even if it get empty, you don't know it because you don't need it. And then when you reach for it like the lady, she knows she used the last of her oil. She knows she used the last of her flour, but every time she went back, it was nothing there for another meal. She don't need enough for a meal tomorrow. Tomorrow ain't here yet. You might not make it to tomorrow. Eat now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 15. Chapter 15, verse 1. Watch this. This is God telling you how to take care of everybody. Everybody. This is God telling you, telling us how to take care of everybody. Verse 1, he said what? At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. Every seven years, this is what he's telling them. Make a release. Amen? Read. And this is the manner, this is how God shall want it to work. God is so specific. He said, every creditor that lendeth all unto his neighbor shall release it. Somebody owe you something for seven years, you don't want it back now. Tell them you don't want it. 
You don't want it. Now, that don't make you crooks. <laughs> Say, I'm going to wait seven years. But if you do, the lender still got to let it go. But now remember, you reap what you sow. Come on, read. And this is the manner of, of the release. Every creditor that lendeth ought unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called the Lord's release. God say, I told you don't act for it back. God is saying, if it take a person seven years to pay you and can't pay you, obviously they don't have it. Leave them alone. Can you do that? Can you do that? Obviously they don't have it. What you going to do? Man, it's been eight years. They ain't paid me. God said, eight years? I told you to let them go at seven. Now, let it go. Read. Come on. What else he said? Of a foreigner... Thou mayest exact it again, but that which is thine with thy brother, thy hand shall release. In other words, he said, if it's a foreigner, you can get it back. I, I let you get it back, but you still can't go asking for it. You got to wait till they bring it to you. Come on, read. What verse we at? Uh, four, he says what? Save, watch this. Save when there shall no more, save when there shall be no more poor among you, for the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land which is in the Lord thy God, giving thee for an inheritance to put. God say, watch this, watch this. If y'all do what I tell you, everybody will be rich. Ain't that something? He said, I'm on. He said, the land is going to be blessed. That means everybody's going to have plenty. God got a system. We're talking about God. Oh, hallelujah. We're talking about God's credit system. We're talking about God's credit system. You want some, you want to be secure? You want everything to work your way? You want things to go, go the way you want it to go? God said, do it my way and watch how good. You know why? Because if your heart get fixed, I take care. You don't have to do nothing. Because, listen, I don't have to do nothing but do what God tells me to do. Read. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 5, he said, well, only if thou be carefully, only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all these commandments which I command thee, this only if you be careful. Careful means you make sure you don't break no rules. Careful means you make sure you give to him that's asking. Careful means seven years dump the debt. Careful means you make sure you give to people that say, careful means don't mess up. Somebody asked me about if, 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 if people commit little sin, is it as bad as big sin? I said, well, first of all, there's a confusion. There is no little sin. So when a person thinks there's a little sin, they living in sin because there is no little sin. Show me what the sin won't send you to hell. Then that's a little sin. Show me one that the Bible said you can do. That's a little sin. I won't send you to hell. Now, God said, I send you to hell for lying. So tell me, when do you come up with little sin? What am I saying? You can't break none of God's rules. That's why he said, do it the way I tell you. You want good credit with God? You can't break no rules. I showed you on Sunday, you can't plow the wicked. I showed you last week and tonight, you got to give to somebody asking. I done showed you, it's nothing wrong wanting vengeance, just let God do it. Now, since you can't do it, why you even walk around wanting it? Because you can't do it because you done found out vengeance is justice. You don't, can, can, can you give a person justice? No, because you don't know their heart. Your heart is deceitful and desperately wicked, and nobody knows their heart. And God said you love the world, but you ought to hate the world. I put the world in you and told you don't love it. Tell me how you're going to fix that. Tell me how you're going to fix loving something I told you not to love. Listen, let me tell y'all something. The world got some stuff. Good stuff. The world, listen, it's some pretty fine sexy women out there in the world. But we can't touch them. Sister, don't y'all be frowning. Y'all see them brothers out there with them muscles and biceps and whatever y'all looking at. But you can't touch them, Simone. Leave them alone. Listen, listen, listen. Watch this. Watch this. Listen, I never forget. I saw this jacket in the store in Ro on Rodeo Drive in Beverly. Beverly, that jacket. 
And this was years ago in the window. Ready. <laughs> I couldn't afford it with all of our paycheck. But, but the jacket, I said, man, Lord, that's a jacket there. Listen, don't tell me what the world, the world got some stuff, but we can't touch it. What am I saying? God say, y'all got to do what I tell you to do. I see women in braids and we, their hair looks nice, but y'all can't touch it. Oh, hallelujah. I've seen some nice tattoos on folk, but we can't get them. Listen, what if, listen, I done seen people driving some nice car, and you, you want that car out of covetous? Yeah, because you ain't got that kind of money. What, what you looking at? Man, y'all could afford one. Come on, fool, turn around. You know you ain't got that kind of money. Why you even daydream? Oh, I wish I could get one of them. Wish, wish your home. Keep on wishing. You'll be wishing in your old age. You can't afford nothing. You don't even got an education to get no money like that. Show sure ain't got no talent to get it. What am I saying? We got a God's credit system. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. He said, only be carefully. Only if thou carefully hearken. That means Paul put it like this. So I'm showing y'all where Paul get a lot of this stuff from. You got to walk circumspectly. You got to take a step and check it out. Okay. I can move. Take the next step. I better stay here for a while because I'm going to get in trouble if I go a little. You got, that's, that's carefully. I can't mess up. I can't mess up. And the, the thought of messing up comes to your mind. In other words, the thought of sin comes to your mind. Don't sit there and say it doesn't. Hallelujah. Verse 6 says what? For the Lord thy God blesses thee as he promised thee, and thou shalt, watch this, lend unto many nations. He telling Israel, y'all going to lend to many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. Woo. Listen, we can lend to many nations. Rephrase that. We can lend to many people, saints. Church of Apostolicity, the apostolic doctrine. We can lend to many people, but we don't borrow. Your pastor ain't borrowed money from nobody to keep Church of Apostolicity going. Your pastor ain't borrowed from one pastor. Your pastor ain't begged not one pastor. Your pastor ain't begged not one saint. Your pastor ain't begged nobody, hallelujah, to be where he is today. Let me tell you, work God's credit system. You think the thought didn't come to mind? I even made a phone call, couldn't reach the brother. Hallelujah. Because God said, John, you ain't going to reach him. You're going to come to me when you need money. So let me tell you, when you do God's credit system, Amen. we ain't got to borrow from nobody. Oh, ha hallelujah. Thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. He ain't talking about you being a literal king. He's talking about you a slave to the borrow. Listen, listen, hallelujah. Folks are slave to me. I ain't a slave to nobody. My sister poured it, but she's part of me. Hallelujah. I explained that last week. What am I saying? I ain't going to be nobody's slave. I ain't borrowing no money from nobody. I don't need to borrow your, I don't, I don't need, I got Jesus. Long as I give. As long as I give my time and my money and my, my help and my strength and my, my knowledge. And listen, God going to keep feeding me. Listen, I'm telling y'all, I'm not a novice at this. I'm not a novice. Hallelujah. He said, what? Hallelujah. What I got? Good. How far I'm supposed to go? We're good. He said, what? If there be among you a poor man, one of thy brethren, within any of thy gates, in the land of which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not hearken thy, I mean, hearten thy heart, nor shut thy hand from the poor brother. Watch this. So we say, we got people in the church, in the congregation, that we know need money. You, you know they need money? Yeah, give it to them then. Don't let them borrow it. Why are you going to make them a slave by making them borrow it when you know they need it, give it to them. But no, you, well, uh, I, I know you're having a hard time. You know, I, I can loan you a couple of hundred. God said, why would you do that? Why don't you give it to them? You know they're in need. If they could pay you back, they wouldn't have to borrow from you. Give it to them and be through with it. But you're wicked. That's why he say, don't harden your heart. 
Listen, don't put them in a box because he done told you the borrower is a slave to the lender. Why you want to be a slave over people? How, if, if they want to bring it back, let them do that. But you make it known, man. I ain't worried about that money. I don't need because they may. Listen, the day is going to come when they got to do it for somebody else. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. What, what that movie? Pay it forward. Don't bring me nothing. Just remember when you see something. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all ever watch that movie? Pay, that's a good movie. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. Everybody helping folk. And folk wonder why they're helping. They say because somebody did it for me. Ooh, glory. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 8, he said what? But thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him and shall surely lend him sufficient. Give him what he need, all of what he need. Give it to him. Give it to him. Even if you want to call him Linda in seven years, you can't get it back. Do I, anybody owe me seven years now? I don't know. It's a, it's a question. If you do know, you ain't got to pay me back. It's been seven years. I don't remember no way. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You can do it with me with seven days, seven hours. I don't care. Because if I had it, I didn't, if I had it to give it to you, I didn't need it. Maybe I had it and I could use it, but I didn't need it. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 9, he said, well, beware. The devil, watch this. But, oh, y'all read that. Oh, I shout. Beware that there be not a thought in thy. You better not have no evil thought in your heart while they looking and asking and you loaning. You better not be trying to figure out, well, you know, I, I, they already owe me. You know, I wonder when they're going to give it back. Oh, that's an evil. That's wicked. Look how he said there. Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart saying, the seven year, the year releases at hand, and thy eye be evil against thy poor brother, and thou givest him, and, and thou givest him naught, and he cry unto the Lord thee, and he be seen. In other words, well, you know, this is seven years, you know. Uh, I ain't gonna get it back for seven years, you know, you know. Uh, or y'all be saying, if I, if I loan them this, you know, when they gonna pay me back? Cause I need it next month. You know? God said, you better not have no evil thoughts. You better not have no evil thought. You better not try to figure out how you are gonna get it before the seven years are up. You better not try to figure out how, and you gonna get it back next week or next month or next year. Don't figure nothing out. Give it to them and get it out of your head. Now, see, I've been telling y'all when I give folks stuff, it's automatically gone right then. I don't care. I don't care because if I have it and you can take it, I can do without it. If I couldn't do without it, you wouldn't have it because it would already be gone. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, money don't make me. I make money. Can I say that again? Money does not make me. Listen, y'all stop letting money make y'all. Y'all make money. How do you make money? With a job, well, technically, yes. But the way you make money is by obeying God's credit system. That's how you make money. God say, you want money, John? Give, and it shall be given unto you. We're going to read that scripture for the night is over. He said, shall men give in your bosom? Oh, hallelujah. It may be by job. It may be by birthday. It may be by just out of the blue. Just maybe by some other Radical reason. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Beware. Beware. There not be a thought in thy wicked heart. The seventh year, the year of release, excuse me, is at hand. And thy eye be evil against thy poor brother. And thou givest him naught. And he cry unto the Lord. Because you know it's time for the release. You don't want to give it to him. You don't want to give it to him. And he said, well, Lord, I had John, and Lord, and John said he didn't have it, and, and Lord looking at John, and you lied, huh? So you, you told your brother you didn't have it. Hmm, I'm going to put holes in your pocket. Come on, verse 10. Thou shalt surely give him, and thine heart shall not be grieved when thou givest unto him. God is straightening y'all out, us out, all of us. He said, when you give it, you better not say, man, I sure couldn't afford it. Boy, they hit me at the wrong time. I was getting ready to pay my house. I'll pay my car. 
I'll get, man, I had made plans. I saved up that money to get me a new dress. God said, y'all better not be greedy. You better not say, I wish I hadn't. You better not say, I had that money for something else. You better not find no reason in your old evil heart to, to say something why you should or should not have. Just give them the money. Give, give, give. What are we talking about? We're talking about the lender. We, can, we need to stop coming up with these old lame, excuses, evil thoughts in our heart when we know somebody's in need. You know they're in need. Help them out. You know you got the money. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Help them out. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What, what verse is that? 10? Thou shalt surely give him all thine heart. I mean, and thine heart shall not be grieved when thou givest unto him. Because that for this thing, the Lord thy God shall bless thee in, wait a minute, in all your works. Watch this. Because you gave somebody some money, God's going to bless everything you do. Now, tell me, uh, I can have a good credit score, but a good credit score, don't, 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 don't let my grapes grow good. God say, I let your grapes grow good, and I let your money last longer. I give you good health, and I bless your wife. I bless your children. I bless the church, John. I bless the saints in your church. I heal them. I, I do a whole lot of wonderful things for you just because you gave something. Just because you gave somebody some money. You, you see why I make money? So I gave somebody $100, and I made how much? I made a lot of money, didn't I? Ooh, glory. So I invested a hundred and got back twenty thousand. Because I ain't had to pay no doctor bills. Ooh, don't let me get started. Hallelujah. Don't let me get started. Don't listen, listen. All of y'all are in good health. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little cocky. Can I get a little cocky for a second? All y'all in good health because I keep helping folks. Because when y'all are blessed, that's a blessing to me. Didn't he say he blessed me? I'm happy all y'all in good health. So to me, that's a blessing. Oh, hallelujah. But listen, can't y'all pay it forward? Just keep paying it forward. Just keep blessing folks. Just keep helping people. Just keep giving to people. Just keep encouraging. Listen, keep doing it. Just keep paying it forward. Listen, then maybe we can get a lot of more folks saved. Maybe we can get a lot of more folks at the church. Maybe we can get a lot of more folks filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because of all the stuff me and my wife done done, look, what, look, look at the prophet. Look at the profit of us shopping in, in, in Goodwill. Amen. Look at the profit of us shopping in thrift stores. Ooh, look at the profit of us eating vegetable soup. And the boys don't know we can't afford no meat. Ooh. Look at the profit of losing homes. Look at the profit of not having no. Look at the profit. Look at the profit. Why don't y'all do this? And let's see what kind of profit we can get now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Got to get it out of my system, y'all. Hallelujah. Look at the prophet. All because, all because for the poor. No, did we read all that? Surely, surely that thou, sure, that thou shalt surely give him and thine heart shall not be grieved when thou give it. Amen. Uh, because for, the, for this thing, the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy works and in all that thou puttest thy hand unto. That's why I can work on old cars, because he blesses me. That's why I can be a plumber, because he blesses me. That's why I can teach Enoch, because he blesses me. That's why I can put up with people, because he blesses me. Listen, that's why I'm getting better today, because he blesses me. That's, that's why I'm, I'm going to be better tomorrow, because he's blessing me. That, listen, 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 that's all. Everything that I can do is because God bless me, all because I keep giving. He showed me my flaw, so therefore I may be mad at somebody because I don't have patience. In the midst of darkness, I see light. You messed up, John, but look at the benefit. Holy smoke, I didn't know that, Lord. All because I keep giving. Don't y'all want God? Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Did we read all of that? 
He said, all that thou puttest thou hand unto. What are you putting your hand to do? Read verse 11. Watch this. For the poor shall never cease out the land. You're going to always have folks asking you for money, Kayla. Always. Poor ain't going nowhere. Going to always be in the land. The poor ain't going nowhere. You're going to always have the poor in the land. So what do you think? One day they're going to be gone? They ain't going nowhere. Read. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore, watch this. I love this. Therefore, I command thee, saying, thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to the poor, to the needy in the land. That means you have what? Everybody. Nobody's exempt. Black, white, Puerto Rican Jew, Catholic, Protestant, ugly, fat, skinny. You help everybody. The bomb on the street, the look of the person standing in front of the liquor store, the dope dealer, the prostitute, whatever you want to look at. They in the land, ain't they? They poor, ain't they? They what well, that's how he else he described them. Uh 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 poor, uh brother. Anybody that's in need, you help them. There's no room for us not to help. What verse is that? 11. Let's go to Luke chapter 6. I think it's Luke 6, 38 is what I want. Let me refresh your mind. Luke 6, 38. When the last time we read the New Testament? It's been over a month, ain't it? And look at God. He's still correcting. He's still fixing. He's still putting us in line. He's still telling us. We ain't got to go to the New Testament to learn how to get to heaven, y'all. It's right here in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the reason I'm doing this, because when Jesus is talking to them with the Sermon on the Mount, they didn't have no New Testament to go read. But look at the help and the instructions and guidance he was giving them. They, they, they couldn't say, well, Jesus said this. Let me go see what Paul said. Paul? Paul ain't wrote nothing. Paul ain't even saying yet. Paul waiting to kill you. But look what Jesus is telling them. He said, ye have heard and it's been said. Thou shalt, listen, come on. Where we at? Luke chapter 6, 38. Is that the one I want? Give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure. You can't get good measure without giving. You can't get it pressed down without giving. You can't get it shaken together without giving. You can't get it running over without giving. You shall men give it. Men can't put nothing in your bosom unless it be, unless you give. Watch this. For with the same measure that ye meet, your receiving in is based on your giving in. Your beginning, let me rephrase it. Your ending, let me rephrase it again. Your, 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 your ticket into heaven is based on what boat you got on. In other words, you only going to get to heaven based on what rules you live in by. Did you get on the boat to hell or did you get on the boat to heaven? Now you want me to make it financial? Your financial situation today is based on what you did yesterday. Your financial situation right now is based on what you did yesterday. Your financial situation tomorrow is going to be based on what you did today. Let me make it long term. When your, your financial situation five years from now is based on what you're doing this year. So five years from now, you're having a hard time? Look at what you did September the 30th, 2020. Look back. Five years from now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray, Lord, if I'm still here and the rapture haven't taken me out or you didn't kill me, remind me of this sermon. September the 30th, 2025, years from now, 2025, September the 30th. Somebody look that up. Tell me what day of the week that is. 2025. hope it's a Sunday or a Wednesday. September the 30th. Come on. Real quick. Y'all quick with them phones. 
I bet you I would say y'all to text your friend, they'd already had that text, huh? September 30th, 2025. It's a Tuesday. We're going to have Bible class that day or something. I'm going to figure out something. Amen? Because I want to know where you are financially. I, do this. Write down where you are financially. Don't write down your finances. Write down I'm um, good, comfortable, bad, terrible, perfect. I'm perfect. That's where I am today. Be honest with yourself. Five years from now, whatever you do starting tonight, it's going to determine where you're going to be five years from now financially. Oh, are you going to follow God's credit plan? Come on, back to Matthew. Chapter, chapter, I want to, I got time. One more. Let's go back since we're closing. Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Remember, money don't make you. You make money. Don't be worried about no evil tidings. Don't worry about that kind of stuff. It's gone. That was yesterday. It's gone because you can't fix it. And you sure can't go back in time. Come on. For all you folk believe in time travel. Okay, travel back. When you get back there, do, do something for me. I don't know what. Come on. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. What does it say? Heal the sick, John. Heal the sick. Let me rephrase that. Heal the sick, ministers. Heal, cleanse the leopard, ministers. Raise the dead, ministers. Cast out the devils, ministers. Freely ye have received. Freely give. Don't charge nobody. I don't care what, what, who, which one of y'all ministers leave here and I let you go preach at another church. Don't you charge them nothing. Amen. Don't you charge them nothing. You let, and if they force it, take it. And if you're a man and you, you are forced to take some money when you preach, give it to your wife. You owe her that. She done put up with some junk, give it to her. Don't you, man, it's by $100. See, you got evil in your heart. No, I said, baby, this is yours. I don't want this. This, this is yours. Hallelujah. Listen, this is, I don't need this. You go do this. And don't buy the kids nothing. And don't buy nothing for the house. Don't go buy no food for the house. Go buy yourself something. Amen. God say freely, freely. You've been given. You go out and freely give. Hallelujah. Listen. As I close, remember. Remember. Use God's credit system. We're going to be on another topic Sunday and next Wednesday. But use God's credit system. It works. It works. I'm your proof. If you want proof that God credit system work, God, I showed y'all, God say when you live right, your, the righteous will never be forsaken. Your seed will never be bread. Hallelujah. Y'all look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah don't ask y'all for no money or nothing. Even when he broke, y'all don't even know he broke. He done got to the point, I don't even know when he broke no more. Because he'll say, Dad, no, I'm good. I'm good. He may say, I ain't got no money. But he said, I don't need none, Dad. I, I got a check coming. This, I'm proud of him. But he tell me, Dad, that's what, I don't know how to do nothing else. That's all you taught me. That, that make a dad feel good. That means he going to pass that on to his son. Because he, he is in his 20s and he said, I, I'm broke, but I don't need nothing. I can wait. Right. Oh, hallelujah. All right. God bless you. Do I need to make any announcements? None. God bless you all. I'll see you Sunday. Y'all be church on time. Amen. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we say thank you for showing us your credit system. We're going to command, we're going to follow your commandments. We're going to do what you told us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.